presented to you by Relief Med. Contact ReliefMed.com today. Louisiana's number one medical cannabis resource. Now, your host, Lon Phillips Sullivan, who is actually me. What is up, everybody? I know you're wondering, where's the early signing day content? Where's the early signing day content? Well, I'm sorry we're not on three. We're not able to publish 90 stories a second or have AI generators or like uh, Sports Illustrated or any of that type of stuff. We, we do what we can. But I assure you, we have been hard at work covering all of it and breaking it down piece by piece. And, you know, in this world where people love to have a take ready the, the second something happens, I think it's also kind of ridiculous and kind of doesn't allow for context or conceptualization of what's actually happened because you are literally spitting out the first things you, you, you can think of, which sometimes keeps your opinions pure and um, it's sometimes a very interesting way to look at things because you got guys just really no time to prepare, really. They just they have to have a take and, you know, have an opinion. Fine. That's all well and good. There's sometimes that I see... You know, we saw Nick Diaz post something today about this 2024 class, saying, you know, these guys, these are the four guys I don't think are going to be busts, basically alluding to the fact that he is overlooking this class, doesn't think much of this 2024 class, and, you know, he's probably one of those guys that sees all the number one rankings for guys that we're looking at and, and our favorite to get in the 2025 class. And he's not even thinking of 2024. And you see the rankings for LSU's 2024 class. You see some of the star ratings. And then you see these, uh, you know, some of the fan base for LSU. I got to be honest with you, as only I can be. This fan base is spoiled, bandwagon at times, and some, sometimes just cruelly misinformed. Or completely unaware. And from what I'm seeing, posts by the average LSU fan from thoughts and analysts from all over the country talking about LSU's 2024 class, which is inside the top 10 on On3, ranked 14th on ESPN, I think ranked like 11th on Go24-7. And most of the takes are, Brian Kelly hasn't established what he's going for yet. They're not in the top ten. They're not doing this and that. They didn't get five stars, blah, blah, blah. What they're failing to understand, I think what even the LSU fan base is failing to understand, which just blows my mind, is how awesome this 2024 class is in the fact that it is rooted 16 out of 27 guys, 17 if you want to count, uh, actually no, 17 because we're going to count Debo Atkins, but 18 if you want to count the Juco offensive lineman, Sean Washington. But literally, far above more than half of these recruits are from Louisiana. Eight of the top 10 Louisiana talents and a big chance to get the ninth with Dominic McKinley when he commits in February. No one can tell me that 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 this class is a failure when you have a quarterback like Colin Hurley, another five-star offensive line haul. I mean, Joseph Cryer, Ethan Calloway, Weston Davis, are you kidding me? Kyrie Lee? This is a sick offensive line. And then you've got some interesting defensive line people coming in there. 
Demarion Johnson. You've got Collage Cobbins, Ahmad Brow. And then the linebacker, Devon Keyes and Tylen Singleton. I really love those two. Really think a lot about those two. But here's the thing. A lot of guys from Texas. Texas is the biggest state from, from where we pulled from outside of Louisiana. Then one from Florida, one from North Carolina. Uh, one from Florida and one from Georgia. And... I think the biggest part of this thing that LSU fans are, are and the national perspective is missing out on is it was not Brian Kelly's goal to sign 27 five stars. I mean, that would be great if, if the five star rating really meant you're getting a five star potential player who's, who's going to be, you know, five star earning the whole way, not just. Um, potential of the ether, you know, whether they'll actually turn out good or not, but actually bona fide five stars. What you're seeing is actually a bigger goal that actually leads more directly to LSU national championships. And that is the long fabled fence around the state of Louisiana. LSU fans have been bitching and moaning about this for years. For years. No one since Saban has been able to build the fence around Louisiana. No one since Saban. No one since Saban. Well, move over Nick Saban. Because Brian Kelly just did it. Eight out of the top ten. Potentially nine out of the top ten. You're putting the fence around Louisiana. And that's what we saw today with Brian Kelly's signings for this class. What him and his staff have been able to do... Frank, Sherman Wilson, J.R. Belton, Bobby Barham, Ferrara, the whole crew. What they've been able to do is special in my opinion because all over the field they've got a difference maker. Corner, yeah, we didn't get enough corners. That's still a position of worry. You still got Juwan Johnson and Wallace Foster, two guys that you just, you really got to hang a hat on and really support because those guys are going to be ballers. Defensive line, we still didn't like everything that we got. We still wanted more. But you got to like some of the pieces you've got there. Linebacker, we are set at linebacker for quite a few years with the pieces that we've got now in place. Especially if, you know, Wit Weeks, West Weeks, continue to stay with the program. You've got a linebacker core for the next five years, just like the offensive line. And, you know, safety. Joel Rogers and Deshaun McBride. I mean, you can't get two better safety poles. And Kerry Cooks did it. I mean, I, I just think that People are overlooking. I, I understand. You want this five-star, that five-star. I get it. People are overlooking who LSU actually has. Who, who LSU actually has got on the docket. Instead of just looking at the shiny toy in the, in the, you know, in the, in the rearview mirror, let's actually appreciate what LSU has done here. And I know I'm not just doing this because oh LSU LSU rah rah rah. You know it, I know it. The number one, the number one supplier of national championships for LSU. What is it? It's not a a, a five star coach. It's not a athletic department throwing money at people. What is it? Louisiana talent. Louisiana players, Louisiana people, Louisiana talent, Louisiana character. That is what supplies LSU national championships and always has. 
And it's kind of interesting that, <laughs> you know, uh, three out of the four LSU National Championship wins have been supplied by quarterbacks who were not from Louisiana. And you might have that theme continue with Colin Hurley from Florida being there. Warren Rabb is the only Louisiana-born quarterback to win a national championship at LSU. And that was back in 1958. So, I mean, I just see some things with this 2024 class that I think are being overlooked. And maybe it's because others don't watch the film don't really know what they're talking about with recruiting until it's the big talk of the town of the day and so they've got to get their opinion in but save the opinions because I think what matters here is about developing these guys and I think you take this class surround them with the talent 2022 2023 with a few uh, transfers here and there sprinkled in, you're going to have something special in the future here in the, in the 2024 class.